There's no branch of medicine that exists where a dead organ is left in, except in dentistry where a root canal is left in. If a guy's got a gangrenous toe, you got to cut the toe off because it's bacterial infested and it's toxic and it's going to kill the patient. If you think that you can get away with an infected toxic tooth and not have a systemic consequence, I think you're deluding yourself. This is the day my whole life went to shit and I didn't even know it. This is called Schoolies Week. Every year, thousands of high school graduates spend a week getting royally wasted in a celebration to the exquisite end of their high school education. That's me, on the left, on my way to another party. Shut up! Shut up! I'll tell you shut up. Get your hand away. Every single time you do this. And this is the guy I was unlucky enough to get in a fight with. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you all right? Piss off! I'll make back up! Settle down! Just... I had no idea that the punch that shattered my teeth was the punch that would shatter my world. Here come those seven little words. You're going to need a root canal. Now, if you've never seen one done before, brace yourself, because this is a root canal. They drill into your tooth, extract the root, fill it with gutta percha, and you're on your merry way. Things have a funny way of catching up with you. One moment you're enjoying your holiday in Thailand, then your heart starts pounding. Your breath gets shorter. Your vision narrows. And you really think you're going to die. Then you find out it was just a panic attack. Okay, well, we might start you off on a course of Lexus M, 10 milligrams. Uh, it's an SSRI. Uh, could be a few side effects, but they're, they're nothing to concern yourself with, okay? I quickly realized that the doctor's treating my chronic illness were clutching at straws. I read the side effects of everything they kept prescribing me. Fatigue, nausea, dizziness, agitation, weight gain, and impotence. When I said that my life went to shit, I'm really not exaggerating. Panic attacks gave way to chronic fatigue. I was a wreck. A total lost cause. Twelve hours of sleep felt like one. I'd get out of bed every morning thinking, will this ever end? Why did I feel so tired? So run down? So anxious and so confused? But I kept following that old saying, grin and bear it. I'd walk like a zombie to the bathroom, staring into the mirror, just like this, and ask myself the same old question, what is wrong with me? But I'd still smile, because that's what we do, right? We smile. We ignore the truth that's right in front of us. We move on. We smile. Smile though your heart is aching. Smile when your heart is breaking. 
We grit our teeth and we smile. I did the only thing that I thought I could do. I went searching for answers. First come blood tests, then more blood tests. Perhaps your hypoglycemic blood tests. Then comes the naturopath and you find yourself taking supplement after supplement after supplement. Get fed up with it, burn your hundred dollar bills, or for some expensive urine. Then you tap yourself silly with some EFT or TFT. Actually, I think sleep apnea is the key. Then you start seeing spiritual healers and doing spiritual courses. Get your chakras balanced from your toe to your head, and why not get your aura red? Tried some reflexology, iridology, kinesiology, psychology, and you better learn about endocrinology. Have Chinese herbs, get cupping, crazy suction. Why not have a go at moxibustion? Hit me with shiatsu whilst I find a new guru. Yeah, I tried NLP, walk the firewalk. Did my daily affirmations, and don't forget your visualizations. Wear lots of crystals, hang upside down. Tried all forms of bioresonance going round, from biocom to zyto and anything using sound. Saw a psychic or ten in their den, helped with my zen. That represents ill health. Get a chiropractor, find a homeopath, get your meridians balanced, have kahuna. I even juice for ten days straight, from wake up till late. Yep, nothing but juice for ten days straight. Eat only organic, increase your macrobiotics, did a parasite cleanse, intestine cleanse, so many liver cleanses. Over a dozen coffee enemas. I tried cold showers, then graduated to ice baths. I relived past lives with hypnotic regression, hell of a session. Made inroads with the healing codes, then the kneeling codes. I screamed and punched pillows. Read a truckload of books, and I even tried a wee bit of medical marijuana. Did shamanic dearmoring. This was actually amazing. Did retreat after retreat after retreat. That was a treat. Did color therapy, aromatherapy, hypnotherapy. Oh, have you tried urine therapy? Ah, you need Shilajit. Man, I've tried all sorts of shit. Tried anything new age, self-improvement. Got blessed by gurus and joined the oneness movement. Got my feet grounded. And don't get me started on pyramid marketing products that I bought that were meant to cure me. I even tried Kambu. Kambu? What's that, you ask? Well, Kambu's a rare Amazonian frog the shamans use to poison your skin, to purge your toxins. They burn it into your skin, you pass out and vomit for 20 minutes. And you may think that I'm joking, but I've got the scars to prove it. And funnily enough, these are all the things that I've tried that actually help. But every day I'd still get up, tired, anxious and confused. I started to think that maybe I was beyond help. What if I could tell you that 98% of women that have breast cancer have a root canal tooth on the same side as their offending breast cancer? What if I told you that the biggest toxic influence in the body in a chronically ill person is a root canal tooth? What if I could tell you that the leading authority in cardiovascular prevention, which is Balin Donine, does not condone root canals in your mouth because of the bacteria? Of the people that come to see me with chronic illness, the question is how many of them have a dental etiology to the cause of their illness? I would say almost all of them. The vast majority of chronic degenerative diseases begin with problems in the mouth, infections and toxins, and it's only until those are addressed that you're going to get any clear positive response with your disease. I had a gal come in here who was early 40s, very fit, very nutrition conscious, and she came in here because she had severe, horrible back pain. In fact, the first day that she walked in, she had a four-pronged cane bent over, and she was on full narcotics round the clock for her chronic pain. 
and she sat down and she wanted me to do some injections on her back to help her alleviate the pain. And I said, I'm happy to do that, but let me just dig a little bit about what could have happened to you. And she said, well, I got back pain. I went to an orthopedist. The orthopedist said I had, did an MRI of my back, said I had a herniated disc, did surgery on me to remove the disc. About six weeks later, I was worse. The orthopedic surgeon did another MRI on me. He said the disc had moved more, that I needed to have a laminectomy at two levels. And he took me in and he did a laminectomy at L4 and L5. Laminectomy means the back half of the bones on the spine are pulled off so that there's more room for the discs and more room for the nerves. At which point I saw her and she was worse. And what came up on the examination that I did, that she had some inflammation in her jawbone. I said, did you have any dental work done prior to this back pain? And she said, well, come to think of it, I did. I had an infected tooth. I had a root canal done. The root canal failed. I had another redo of the root canal. It also failed. I had the root canal tooth pulled and I had an, a, a graft put in there and I had an implant put in there. So I said, let's do an experiment in the office. I can inject a local anesthetic on that tooth. If your back pain is related to that tooth and I block the nerve coming from that tooth, it may make your back pain feel better. And that may be the reason for your pain because after two failed surgeries, another one, the chances of it working aren't very good. So she said, I'm in. So I took some local anesthetic and I injected her tooth and I waited about 15 minutes. And when I came back into the room, she was standing up going like this. I said, how does it feel? She says, it feels 90% gone. I said, then probably this is linked to that tooth. I just want to make sure you come back in three days, we're going to do this again. I want to make sure that this just isn't as a, a relief reaction, sort of a mental, a psych, you know, this is all psychosomatic and it's gone. We did it again. And she said, it's gone. I'm going back to the oral surgeon and I'm going to have him take the darn implant out. Within a couple of weeks, her back pain, except for what was left over surgical trauma, was gone. Well, root canal procedure is still a very, very popular thing in dentistry because no one wants to lose a tooth. But more and more people are beginning to realize, even from the current day modern and very uh, traditional literature, that it's impossible to sterilize a root canal system. Most conventional dentists believe there's no problem with them, but I, I personally couldn't disagree more. I think that they are a hidden source of toxicity for almost anyone. The reason that root canals have an inherent problem is that because we know that nowhere else in the body can we leave dead tissue. Anywhere else in the body, your appendix dies, uh, you have dead tissue that doesn't heal in any other area of the body, we know we have to remove that because it's a haven for bacteria and it's not compatible with health. And the same is true in, in a tooth. A tooth is a living uh, structure, has a blood supply, has a nerve supply. And so when a tooth dies or becomes infected and we decide to go in and do a root canal, even the best endodontist uh, or root canal specialist can do a great job at cleaning out the main canal of any of the teeth. But what they can't get to are all of these thousands of tubules. You could see if you cut a tooth in half or under a microscope, you can see these thousands of tubules that run out in every different direction at all sorts of angles off from the main canal. Those microtubules are big enough for a bacteria to fit in, but not much else. And the problem is if you've got six to eight miles of microtubules in a single tooth, it's impossible. You can see why it's impossible to sterilize that tooth. So after the root canal has been performed, unfortunately, bacteria still reside within the tooth. And now you have this nice, warm, incubated tooth where the bacteria are able to flourish. And now there is no access from the patient's own immune system to the tooth because in the process of doing the root canal treatment, the blood supply and the nerve have been severed from that tooth. So now the body can't deliver its own immune defenses to help keep the infection in check. 70 to 90% of all medical problems actually originate in the mouth. Conventional dentistry uh, still has a focus on the mechanistic Newtonian mentality. 
that the, the teeth are not connected to the rest of the body. I mean, embryologically, the teeth develop from uh, the same tissues that gives rise to your uh, sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The blood supply and the mouth literally will take any toxins via the lymphatic system and take it down to the thyroid, the thymus, the heart, and the rest of the body. So there is a direct connection. The teeth is not just like a stone in the mouth. It is extremely densely connected. The pulp is extremely densely connected to the lymph system, to the autonomic nerve system. More than any other organs, it's connected to the afferences, the sensitive nerves to the brain directly and to all meridian systems. Every tooth connects up energetically through the meridian system to certain organs and glands. So for example, on the upper side of the jaw, the last two molars and this bicuspid actually connect up energetically to the left breast. And on this side, it's to the right breast. And 95% of the time, women who have breast cancer, who undergo a, a uh, thermographic study, will be found to have hot spots in the jaw on the same side as that malignant breast. 97% of our breast cancer patients in an age between 30 and 70, we tested all these patients. They had a root canal or a toxic situation in the teeth. The discussion of the energetic relationship of the teeth to the rest of the body is very interesting. Every tooth lies on a specific acupuncture meridian, relates to certain organs and tissues and vertebrae and muscle groups. And so very often you can see a direct relationship. For instance, there was a 19-year-old girl, her first year in college, she had a root canal on a front tooth. That front tooth relates to the kidney and the bladder. She started to have bladder infections and kidney infections. She tried every treatment known, and she was constantly going on antibiotics, and nothing helped. When she came to me, when I tested that root canal, I saw the direct relationship and told the mother, and it was very hard because here you had a 19-year-old girl and it was a front tooth, but I said, I think in this case, the, really the thing that needs to be done is to remove that tooth. Well, they didn't want to hear that, so they went and tried other treatments. And then about three months later, still suffering from chronic kidney problems and urinary bladder problems, she took the tooth out. And that was the end of the problem. I remember years ago having a physician say, I just, I can't buy into this concept of this electricity going through these meridians. I've never seen a meridian in all the cadaver labs I've ever been in. And I said, okay, when you can do an EKG, on your cadaver, I'll be able to show you a meridian because you, you can't find it when the person's dead. When you're looking at doing an EEG or an EMG or an EKG, we're looking at the electricity going through the body and that is completely mainstream. Each tooth actually lies on a different meridian. So those energy pathways that we discussed, they go through particular areas. So if we're looking at the wisdom teeth, we're talking about a small intestine and a heart. As we move forward on the top and we have these molars, then we're looking at breast, we're looking at thyroid. On this side, we're looking at pancreas. On this side, we're looking at spleen. Then we move forward to the bicuspids and their lung and large intestine. We go to the eye teeth and it's called an eye tooth for a reason because it's connected to your eye. It's also connected to the liver and to the gallbladder. And then these four front teeth, top and bottom, are connected to the urinary tract, to the anal canal, to the adrenals, to the pituitary, to your kidney, everything that's related to that urinary tract. I use a piece of equipment that was originally called EAV, electroacupuncture according to Vol. I put electricity into the potty and then you gather data from that. So when I'm testing teeth, I actually have the person holding a bar in their hand and that bar is the collection point and they touch a tooth and put it in the circuitry and then I introduce by touching on a particular acupuncture point, I introduce the electricity into the body to see if it can go all the way through that meridian. And you start seeing where 
electricity is being blocked and now you start asking questions about the person's health and they go, wow, how did you know that? I didn't even tell you that I was having problems there. Because when the electricity can't get through, it compromises that meridian. Many people have trouble getting their mind around the fact that their teeth are making them sick. But let me just tell you that a year or so ago, we looked at the last 60 cancer patients that we had seen, and 96% of them had an infected tooth in the same power supply circuit as their primary cancer, 96%. This might sound really funny to you, but I've always wanted to learn how to surf. The sun, the spray, and that feeling of conquering a force beyond your control. Maybe that's symbolic. Because after all my trials and tribulations, I still felt like I'd just drawn a bad lottery number. You know you're sick when you can miraculously attract a gorgeous girl. You're punching way above your weight, and you can't get it up. And I know every guy will say this, but it hasn't happened before. Suffice to say, she left pretty soon after. How was this journey going to end? Would I reach the top of the mountain, conquering everything that came before me? Would it be the death of me? I obsessed over these questions and everything else. Even friends and family, they became less important. What is wrong with you? You're such a hypochondriac. Why is he such a hermit? Toughen up and get on with it. I think he has depression. depression. Why is he so anxious? It's all in his head. I felt truly empty inside. Nobody who has an abscess in the body would suggest ignoring it, and the same with dental abscesses. The problem is that they're frequently asymptomatic. Most people who come to see me who have root canals, they turn out to be infected, but they're not coming with a sore tooth. Nobody comes to see me with a sore tooth. They come with their arthritis, their fatigue, their cancer, their heart disease, and it turns out when I get a scan done of the root canal that there's bone being absorbed because of chronic infection of the tooth. Conventional dentistry believes that you should save a tooth at all costs. And if the patient dies, well, that was the price of saving the tooth. They, they don't really c come with the concept that you should um, take things that are dead out of the body. It was shocking to me because I had family members who had root canal treated teeth and I had done root canals because I was never um, taught to, to question if residual infection was having any kind of negative implication on the overall health of the patient. Probably the earliest research on root canal treated teeth that clearly demonstrated how toxic they were all of the time was the work of Dr. Weston Price. Dr. Weston Price, who did about 25 years of research on root canals, found that they could cause almost anything, from mental disease to heart disease to arthritis. So when Weston Price started doing root canals on his patients, he found that a lot of them were getting sick. And so he started doing some research he'd take out the tooth, he would sterilize the tooth on the outside, making sure that there was nothing as far as bacteria, slip it under the skin of a rabbit and found out that the rabbit had whatever disease the patient had. Who let's say had heart disease, kidney disease, arthritis, neurologic disease, you name it. And even more amazingly is it would take that same tooth and successively put it underneath the skin of 20, 30, 50 consecutive rabbits, and they all developed the same medical syndrome as the original person who supplied that tooth. So there is a direct connection between the pathogens of these dead teeth, the galvanic currents between the different metals in the mouth. Uh, you know, perfect example, we had a patient with emphysema on steroids for over a year. I tracked it down to a strep infection in the jawbone where he had a, a tooth removed 15 years prior. Once I got rid of the strep infection and jawbone, his emphysema totally disappeared. So the, the mouth is the toxic waste dump that's impacting on the rest of the body.
Now, Dr. Price was a dentist and root canals had become posh. You know, originally if you were a poor person and you couldn't afford dentistry, then your teeth would be taken out. So when someone had money and they went to the dentist and said, gosh, you know, I've just kind of been neglectful. I haven't gotten in. I want to know if there's a way you can save my tooth because if I open and laugh, people are going to think I'm poor because I don't have my teeth. So it was actually more patient driven that dentistry start taxiderming teeth to keep them in someone's mouth and then put a nice shiny gold crown on there so that when they laughed, everybody thought they had money because you saw these gold teeth then. Unfortunately, the, uh, the dental schools, you know, look at the mouth as being a mannequin and that you can do any type of procedure without any uh, direct impact on the rest of the body. But this is the farthest thing from the truth. Data we've just recently gotten shows now that the number one cause of heart attack is a root canal treated tooth. Plain and simple, not correlation, not link, cause and effect. If you take a course through Bale and Donine, and they're the leaders in cardiovascular event prevention, they will tell you they will not condone having a root canal in your mouth because that bacteria courses through your body and that bacteria is known to affect cardiovascular disease. My pet peeve as a cardiologist right now is that so many family practitioners, internal medicine, practitioners, cardiologists, my fellow cardiologists, see a patient that has a heart attack and they find the cholesterol's okay, the lipids are okay, there's no high blood pressure, there's no risk factors, and they might not use these words with the patients, but they're just gonna tell you and they think that patient just had bad luck. Most of these things aren't genetic problems. You know, this person for the first 25 or 50 years of their life was okay. Now they're not. This isn't your genes. This is your body's toxic. And if we can restore those things, you can get your health back and your energy back and you can have a fun life. I like word pictures. So we're gonna use this scenario of, I'm driving my car down the road and I see my oil light has come on. Well, I could get a hammer and smash the oil light and that would take care of the problem, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't because it's a sign or a symptom that something is going on. What I like to do is look deeper down and find the particular burden or the root cause, and no pun intended because most of the time it's a tooth problem. And so the sun rose on another day. I walked to the bathroom as usual. I asked myself that same question. What is wrong with you? And as usual, I was on my way to yet another test. Another healing modality. Using a device called a Lecker antenna, the information from your blood is tested against the variety of things that can make people sick and the antenna swings if the answer is yes. Is it emotional? No. Is it a parasite? No. Is it heavy metals? No. Is it dental? Yes. Is it a mercury filling? No. Is it an infected root canal? You have an infected root canal. Strange science aside, this was the first time anyone had told me my chronic fatigue was because of a tooth. It seemed bizarre until I really did some research. My quest started with books. The 
basic problem with a root canal is it's what I call a fatally flawed procedure. Fatally flawed in terms of the fact that the reason a root canal is done is you come to the dentist with pain. A tooth hurts. You want to get rid of the pain, naturally. The problem is, in taking out the pain, the dentist takes out the nerve, the pulp, and the blood supply, and the connective tissue. Basically, if you will, the tooth undergoes a process of taxidermy while it's still in your mouth. That tooth is dead. There's no feeling in it, so there's no pain. But there's an abscess, there's an infection there that's active. And if you put probes in there and measure, you will get biotoxins that are among the severest that exist in nature. The wisdom poured in from podcasts, YouTube, Skype sessions, articles. I digested everything I heard. Root canal treated teeth can be a silent type of infection. I've taken out numerous root canal treated teeth that looked completely fine on the x-ray. And yet, after we took that tooth out and cleaned out that socket, we would find uh, a large area of dead bone or an actual cyst or even actual pus and infection in there. And then I discovered the father of biological dentistry, Hal Huggins. I mean, if you've got a ruptured appendix, you're gonna fill it with wax and put a gold crown on it? You got the same bacteria there. Only the ones in the mouth may be worse. The question is, do all root canal teeth have to be removed? And the answer is no. Only in those people who are interested in their health. But something didn't quite add up. If root canal treated teeth were this much of a problem, why didn't more people know about it? About 95% of dentists have x-ray equipment in their office, which is only two-dimensional which means when they take the x-ray from here, they can only see width and height on the tooth. They can't see depth. And you might take a picture of a root canal tooth and it looks fine. But if you do another kind of x-ray, it's called cone beam, it's almost like a CAT scan, where you can get a three-dimensional view of that tooth, we very commonly find that these root canal teeth are abscessed. And there is an abscess sitting around the tooth that isn't visible on the 2D x-ray. We were doing our training and I had a patient I had taken a cone beam on and um, she was struggling um, with some emotional problems and chronic fatigue and just a lot of things. And we were reviewing her cone beam with the technician, not a biological dentist, like this is a technician from the company. And I said, well, okay, let's just go to each one of the root canal treated teeth and kind of, you know, flip this image and see if we see any pathology. And so as we're flipping through, he's like, oh man, like these look terrible. There's a cyst here and there's a cyst here. I see root canals all the time look great on an x-ray, but they do not test well. They're a real problem for the individual. Every root canal tooth contains dead tissue, and dead tissue is a haven for bacteria. We analyzed uh, 87 uh, very well done root canal treated teeth, uh, many of them by endodontists and many more uh, by general dentists. And what we found was that regardless of how well the root canal was performed, by far the vast majority had a high degree of toxicity. There were not one, there was not one of those 87 that was non-toxic. The toxins are oftentimes the waste material from the bacteria. They can be also just portions, for example, of the cell wall of a bacteria, but oftentimes they're the waste material of the bacteria. Perhaps one of the world's leading authorities on biological toxins was Boyd Haley at the University of Kentucky. What Dr. Haley found and published is that the toxins from a root canal tooth are equal in toxicity to the standard by which all biological toxins are measured, namely hydrogen sulfide. He also found that the toxins from a root canal tooth are equal in toxicity to botulism poisoning. As you know, that's one of the worst uh, that we know about either. All root canals are infected without any exception. There was a big study done by an American Holistic Dentist Society, very officially. They tested 30,000, 30,000 root canals extracted over the years, and they were 
all infected, without any exception. There used to be a laboratory at the University of Kentucky. It was called Affinity Labeling Technologies. It was a laboratory from Dr. Boyd Haley, who was the chairman of the Department of Chemistry there. And he set up a lab test where you could stick a cotton pledge. It was sort of a hard cotton thing underneath a tooth that you suspected as being bad. And you shoved it underneath the gum, pulled it out, and then you'd have a sample of fluid. And the samples would go to their laboratory. And what they would do is a bioassay to find was there toxic material coming from the root of the tooth? And this laboratory doesn't exist anymore, but I have an old report from a patient. This was a patient with chronic fatigue. He came to me. When I examined him, I thought, gee, I think your problem is a toxic root canal tooth. Go to the dentist, have this test done. He went and had the test done, and these are the results of the test. Now, what the test looks at is these are six enzymes which are part of what's called the Krebs cycle. These are the energy producing part of the cell. And these enzymes are able to take up sugar molecule and get the energy out of it. If these enzymes are blocked, then that cell can't make energy. And what biotoxins do is they block these enzymes from working. So what they did is took the stuff from the tooth, the bad tooth and the good tooth, and they incubated it with these enzymes and they have a measurement system where they say, how bad was that enzyme blocked? And on this particular patient, the average was 93% inhibition, which is blocking of that enzyme. And by coordinating with dentists around the country, over 5,000 extracted root canal treated teeth were submitted to Dr. Haley for testing. 100% of them were toxic. And just to make sure this wasn't something they just had to do with the tooth or the mouth. They also submitted some teeth that were extracted for orthodontic purposes. In other words, normal teeth, but they needed to want, let the other teeth grow in. None of these teeth inhibited any of these enzymes. This was finally the smoking gun. This was cause and effect, that the root canal simply cannot be sterilized inside the mouth. It cannot be put it to a situation where the infection inside the root canal could ever be resolved. And it's not sensed locally because the, the tooth, when you root canal it, you disconnect from the nerve, so there is no more sensitivity, so the patient can't feel the, the toxic effect, can't feel the death. And one of the amazing things is when people come into the office and I say, I'm gonna tell you what's going on with you. You have insomnia, you have trouble with your memory, you can't deal with stress, you can't uh, deal with uh, stimulus, and I go down this list, a lot of times they start crying because usually I'm the first physician who has described to them without them telling me what's going on in their life. Because all the other physicians they've seen have just said, oh, that's all in your mind here, take these antidepressants and you'll be fine. The root canal specialists want to protect their procedure. Okay, so, they're going to try to reassure people as much as possible. And I don't know what their intent is. I'm not trying to say they're not interested in the health and welfare of their patients, but they truly believe the root canal procedure is fine. It does a good job. And they don't believe that it's chronically infected. But the scientific evidence takes this out of belief range, okay? Belief has nothing to do with it. It's that science shows the root canal is always infected and the only differentiation is some are a little bit more toxic and more infected than the other ones. When I was a boy, I used to run to his office. The guys liked to kid me, running to a dentist. But he was some dentist. His name was Dr. Bran. And he always let me come five minutes early just so I could see his lab. He let me touch things and tell me about them. I used to get so excited, I'd, I'd tell Dr. Bran I was going to be a dentist when I grew up. And he'd pat my head and say, fine, fine. Only he never told me how hard it was to become one. When I was older, I learned. He went to college for eight years and had to study dozens of subjects, not just dental ones physiology and anatomy and bacteriology.
found out that in America, about 25 million new root canal procedures are done each year. And while this did alarm me, what it really made me wonder was, why me? Why didn't all these people have root canal problems like I did? So oftentimes I'm asked, why would a root canal have a systemic health impact on one person and maybe not on another? And the reason is, is because we're all susceptible to toxicities in different ranges. Uh, as you know, there are some people who can tolerate cigarette smoking, for example, for 60 or 70 years and have no apparent ill effects. And yet there are people who can smoke for a year or two and develop a carcinoma. Everyone processes toxins differently. So there are some patients who are able to handle a root canal treated tooth and their immune system isn't overloaded by that. Yet there are other patients we find who just one root canal has a dramatic effect on their immune system. The practice that I have is a very selected practice. Most of the people we see have chronic serious illness. Now probably in the general population, these aren't diagnosed because the guy who's seeing the patient for high blood pressure, for chronic back pain, is not associating it and he's not testing, could this be a dental issue that's referred? So it's very important that dentistry and medicine get together. It's important that physicians are as aware of the importance of the mouth as it is for the dentist to realize that some of the procedures that he or she does in the mouth severely and strongly impacts the health of the body. Perfect example, we had a patient referred to us who had stage four throat cancer. The bottom line was he had two root canal teeth. The radiographs looked pristine and a thousand dentists that would view him would say these are absolutely normal. The pathogens that were in these two root canal teeth were in his throat, exactly where the cancer was. I extracted the two teeth, we ozonated the jawbone, homeopathics and ionic silver. In three weeks, the stage four throat cancer was totally resolved, documented with PET scans, blood tests, and visual. This is the impact of toxic root canal teeth. There was one relation study between diseases and root canals published in a very prestigious oncology newspaper in the United States, which showed that 90% of all the prostate cancer they contain in its tissue the cancerogenic bacteria which come from root canal. I felt bad <laughs> because I had done, um, I'd done a lot of those and I actually had thought at one point that that's what I wanted to do the rest of my life. I thought, how can this be? You know, this is something that's been going on for so long. There's a whole specialty around it. But whenever colleagues started presenting me with different pieces of research, I obviously came to the conclusion that I did not want to, to do root canal treatment anymore personally. I could not confidently say that I was not doing harm in some situations. The bottom line is when you do a root canal, it cuts the flow of energy to these different organs and can affect them. You can't get rid of an infection unless you have a viable immune system with complete access to all the parts that are infected. And this is uniformly eliminated when a root canal is done. The analogy that I like to use, in my office, there's a sliding door. You are on one side of the door with the door closed and you have Christmas lights in your hand. You wanna know if all the lights light up. I am on the other side of the sliding door and I have a, an extension cord plugged in, ready to go, but you and I are hitting the door. We can't connect, there's no way. So if someone comes by and they start sanding on the door, how much of the door has to be gone before you and I can connect? Not a thin piece of balsa wood, all of it. Once all of the door is removed, then you and I are able to make a connection, just like the body does. It totally reconnects and the electricity goes through. After everything that I'd uncovered, I knew my teeth had to come out. I saw a biological dentist and the first thing he spotted was... So it looks like he doesn't trauma to your front tooth. Yep, that punch in the mouth. Why was I such a sucker for a damsel in distress? So let's have a look at the x-ray here. And all this discoloration is where the infection is. So we've got a deep pocket infection up top, and that's what's been causing our health issues. 
So we're going to extract the root canal tooth and with a dental burr we're going to remove the periodontal ligament down to the bone and then we'll give you a, a new tooth, a zirconian tooth, and we'll bridge it to either side. So in the next three or four months this will heal up nicely and you'll notice a dramatic increase in your energy levels. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Alright, let's do this. Now I don't want you to think that as soon as you get your tooth out, you'll wake up with boundless energy. The damage has been done. So you have to heal yourself and go through those things like the parasite cleanse, liver cleanse, kidney cleanse, colon cleanse, TBM, sawdust, fasting, juice, Ooh, intense journey. But gradually you start to feel your health returning. Now, it's important, obviously, if you have a root canal and you're convinced of the information I'm talking about and the science behind it, you want to get it out of your body, you want it to have it stop negatively impacting your health. Well, you need to find a dentist who knows what he or she is doing because it involves more than a simple extraction. Removing the root canal tooth is only the first step in the solution. Afterwards, we have to drain the area from the bacteria because the, the jaw bones, they are not like a stone, they are sponges, uh, bones, and the bacteria and the toxins go into these bones too. This has to be uh, drained and treated too. And this is where I also find ozone gas so indispensable because you can just punch with a very tiny needle. You go into the area and then you inject ozone gas and that gas will go off into all the areas off this main tunnel, all the areas where we have infection. It's really interesting because I've had people where we've injected down here and they'll feel the gas travel all the way over to the other side where they'll feel it travel all the way up under the eye. There was no way you're going to do surgery and clean out a whole person's jawbone. And it's interesting how as treatment goes on with the gas, they feel that that area where it's going off into is shrinking. This jawbone area has a very dense nerve network. These nerves don't relay, you know? It's not like here goes to the spinal gourd or somewhere else. These nerves go right into the middle of the brain where the regulation of the nervous system occurs. They're called cranial nerves. This cranial nerve is the biggest one in the body and it goes right into there. And this is a very delicate and protected area. So that if someone has a chronic smoldering infection with biotoxin in this area, it can affect their brain, the regulation of their brain, their energy, and lots of other things. For example, we had a woman with so-called Hashimoto's disease, an autoimmune problem and it was coming from a cytomegalovirus from a third molar extraction site in the jawbone, plus nickel ions from an orthodontic retaining wire. Once those two substances were removed from the thyroid and the sources, the Hashimoto's totally disappeared. So autoimmune problems are there for a reason. The body doesn't attack itself for no reason. There's something there that's causing that reaction. So the doctor has to be alert to this, because if he wants cures, especially with cancer, you've got to address these. They're big stressors on the body and they take a lot of immune attention. And if the immune system's like, don't let the toxin get into the brain and kill me, it's letting the cancer cells go here or men in the prostate or in the colon, you know, the big ones, or in the lung, these are the four big cancers. Your chance for cancer is significantly increased. And it's just spreading out of the ignorance of the so-called specialists that they don't want to accept this fact, even though it's absolutely clearly proven. So in doing the testing of the bacteria, we found that there are, in root canals, 53 different bacteria. 28 of them are directly involved with the health of the heart that they are known from the scientific literature to create certain heart conditions. Some of them specialize in attacking the heart valve. Many of them cause what's called endocarditis, inflammation of the vessels inside the heart. And we now have studies from the Journal of the American Dental Association that show that when you have one or more root canals in your mouth, Statistically speaking, you have a greater chance of heart attack, plain and simple.
We know with increasing evidence that the cause of coronary artery disease is inflammation of the endothelium, the lining of the blood vessel wall. What we need to do in medicine then is work out what is inflaming the wall of the artery because ultimately what the body does is the body tries to seal off the inflammation. The body uses cholesterol, it uses calcium to seal off that inflammation. You're getting what's called a plaque. The same plaques that we get on our teeth, which is basically bacteria covered by a biofilm, then covered by a layer of calcium, is exactly what we're seeing in coronary arteries. So the trick is not to try and get rid of that cholesterol, which is going there, is being put there by the body to protect us against the inflammation. The trick is to try and work out what is causing the underlying inflammation. Dental infection is a big part of that because of the, the seeding of bacteria from the mouth straight into the bloodstream, then to the coronary arteries. This is a process that can occur in a person and it can be undone if it's done properly by a doctor who knows what they're doing. We do a test for all these organic toxins where, where we can see if the body is, so to say, impregnated uh, by these dental toxins which come from the root canals. We can measure these, we call them xenohormones, cancerogenic substances which are organic molecules. Once we have the basic toxic source removed from the patient, then things like infrared sauna is good. You'll sweat. There's nutritional agents that we can give you. And we can tease these things out of you and get them out. Then our basic program is we find out what nutrients they're missing and we give it back to them. Some of it's oral supplements. Some of it's done intravenously. We do IV vitamin C. We use pulse magnetic fields because in cells that don't make energy, those cells don't have energy and the membrane around the cell can't control very well what goes in and out. If we put them in an environment where there's a gentle pulse magnetic field, it recharges that cell membrane. Now that cell can detoxify itself. In over three to six months, sometimes a little bit longer, we can get these things out. You can get your levels down to where they're safer and then it can help you restore your health. I was starting to feel great. So I went to an EAV machine operator to make sure my energy flow was on track but something was off. I found I had another blockage, this time in one of my wisdom teeth. I dug deeper and got a cone beam scan. I was told it was a cavitation, something else you really don't want. Just my luck. I had to get that sorted out now as well. Step one was actually finding out what a cavitation is. Cavitations are basically residual infections in the jawbone which result from extraction of teeth. If the extraction site is not meticulously curated and cleansed, the bacteria just infiltrate into that wound and live there for the rest of the life of the patient. Every bone in your body is connected to another bone by way of a ligament. Your tooth is connected to your jawbone by way of what we call a periodontal ligament. If a tooth is properly pulled, when the tooth is out, the dentist will also take out that ligament. And if that ligament is gone, that bone will heal in so that there is full bone and you have a restored jawbone. But if the doctor pulls that tooth and doesn't take out that ligament, that space where that tooth was may seal over on the top and be a cavity. So that periodontal ligament staying in the socket, it prevents communication from the body being able to send the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts to that extraction site and fill in with healthy bone. It becomes a barrier. And it will be a place where the body then will use as a storage depot for junk, toxic junk, bacteria, funguses, and it won't hurt. It may not be completely visible on a regular x-ray, but it is sitting there. So the periodontal ligament prevents healing. One actual study on 5,000 cavitations left after wisdom teeth were removed, 4,999 had not healed. Only one in 5,000 had healed. The majority of people uh, in the United States and in the developed countries around the world that have had extracted teeth for any reason also have cavitations. And what's inside that hole is nothing different. And this sounds disgusting and it sounds like an exaggeration, but it's not. It's the same as wet, infectious gangrene. 
these cavitations in the jawbone, they can create significant diseases, significant neurological diseases like, for example, MS. But that cavitation can occur from different things. For instance, a person could have a clotting disease or they could have had a, a football injury, something that made the bone not be healthy in that particular area. The most common reason is that the tooth was removed and the periodontal ligament was not taken out. And therefore that void of where the tooth was never did fill in appropriately with healthy bone. The second most common reason is that that bacteria that's in a root canal tooth will find a micro fracture through that particular root surface and kind of worm hole through the bone and create a void. And so it's not uncommon for a cavitation to occur next to a root canal. The most common spots are the wisdom teeth. The wisdom teeth are unique in that there are four circuits going through it instead of just two. It's heart, small intestine, and the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. And so you see people whose adrenal glands are not working. And it's because they have infection in where their wisdom teeth were taken out. Because you can have infections in the bone where your wisdom teeth were taken off for 50 years and essentially have no pain there, but it completely destroys your life. When you don't have enough adrenaline, you have trouble going to sleep. And then you have trouble dealing with stress. And then it gets to where you can't stand any stimulus. So you don't like loud music. You don't like loud noises. You can't be around a rowdy crowd. You can't be around people who are arguing. Now, what I just described is a person whose life's in the toilet. For instance, I myself had my wisdom teeth out when I was in dental school. About 30 years later, I developed a uh, heart arrhythmia and nothing seemed to help it. I would take intravenous vitamins. I tried homeopathics. Nothing was doing it. And all of a sudden I said, wait a minute, let me check, see if I have a cavitation. That wisdom tooth, which is on the heart meridian, you see, was causing the problem. If you can get a good, normal 3D cone beam x-ray of your jawbone, then you do have a much higher reassurance that you don't have this cavitation process going on inside the jawbone as well. And if the dentist unroofs that and scoops that stuff out and then removes that ligament and then that heals, that patient can get well. One of the questions that we get is, are there things I can do prior to my procedure to increase my ability to heal properly from a surgical procedure like a cavitation or from a root canal removal? One of the biggest things that you can do is to have proper nutrition, be eating a clean diet, be getting enough proteins and enough vitamins and minerals. When that tooth comes out, you wanna make sure that the socket is cleaned out really well. You wanna remove the periodontal ligament. If there's infection, you wanna get rid of the infection. And then you let it heal. I like to let the body fill it in with its own natural bone. You have to wait at least three months for that. You want to check it and make sure that it did heal, that you don't have the cavitation. But let's say it's healed, how do you replace the tooth? Well, you have different options. Of course, an option is you don't replace it, you leave it alone. Another option is you can use something removable, which most people don't like, it's not very comfortable. The other option is you could put a bridge in, where you're bridging that space. And there are two types of bridges. The traditional bridge, which I don't like, is where you have to mutilate the teeth on either side of that space to hold the missing tooth. And the problem with that is, when you mutilate those teeth, you increase the odds that those teeth could need a root canal in the future. So I prefer to use a bonded type bridge where the Butman teeth, as they're called, or the supporting teeth, have minimal preparation, and that holds the missing tooth. Now, the only downside with that really is that it periodically will come loose and need to be re-cemented. Now, of course, the best option is to take really good care of our teeth and gums with a comprehensive dental program so we never need a root canal. But let's say that hasn't happened like uh, me and a lot of other people I know. Uh, let's say there was trauma involved and you didn't get an option. Can't really walk around with no front teeth. It's not very good for business. Am I gonna have some sort of bridge? Am I gonna have some sort of implant? An implant is where you're going and you're, you're going into the bone and you're placing 
what traditionally has been a titanium implant. Now, today, we have also ceramic implants. The advantages and disadvantages, well, the titanium, the problem is you're putting a metal into the bone. Titanium itself is known as a hapton. It means the ions in the titanium itself can trigger autoimmune. So if you are genetically predisposed to something like Hashimoto's, celiacs, scleroderma, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, it might get turned on, and even if that implant is removed, the, the trigger's already been pulled. So now you've got problems that you didn't have. Plus, I've got metal that is directly going into my meridian system. So it's like sticking a spoon in an electric socket and bending it around and sticking it in the bottom part, and it shorts out the whole meridian. What we're finding is that many physicians that are referring their patients here, and also patients that are doing their own research, are desiring to have no metal in their mouth. They want to eliminate anything that could uh, create a current. And that's why we now have zirconia implants, which is, it's more like a ceramic. It's a complete non-metal implant that looks the same as a titanium implant and functions the same, but is considered much more biocompatible for the tissue and for the patient. And it interferes with the body much, much less than titanium implants. I do not say zirconium implants are 100% good, but they are much better tolerable to the body than titanium implants are. So good medicine would include this, and that's what we want to do. We want just the best medicine. We want to give people things that don't hurt them more than they help them. Root canals are probably one of the most pernicious, toxic, hidden influences on your health. And if you're struggling to understand why you're so sick and you have multiple root canals, please examine that issue. Now, I don't want you to think that I had my head in the clouds by saying that the only reason I got chronic fatigue was because I had a root canal. My search has led me to believe that all chronic disease is because of a toxic overload. These toxins come in various forms, from as simple as toxic junk food to environmental toxins, to toxic emotions. We're all now learning about the toxic effects of electromagnetic frequencies as well. And we also can't rule out pathogens. What I can say is that until I stopped the source of my toxic root canal by having it removed, I could never get better, no matter what I tried. It really was the biggest piece of the jigsaw puzzle. The root cause, so to speak. So your dentist says you need a root canal. Apart from running for the door, what are your options? Firstly, if the tooth needs to be removed, make sure you see a holistic dentist, one who can remove the infection and periodontal ligament properly. Then, once the tooth is removed and the mouth is healed, you have three good options. Your first option is to get a bonded ceramic bridge. Your second option is to get a zirconia implant. Now, 99% of dentists will recommend a titanium implant but that is just as bad as a root canal. So make sure your implant is zirconia. Then your third option is a good old fashioned denture. Keep smiling. I've been reading this book about Gandhi. He didn't have a lot of tooth problems like me. Rumor was he had dentures he slipped in and out every night, but his words were as beautiful as his smile. He said that even if you're a minority of one, the truth is still the truth. Probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 or 90 percent of people are sick, at least in part, if not totally, by an infected tooth. This can be a miracle for a patient. This can be life-saving on a patient. And I've got tons of patients where this was really their problem. And when we addressed this, then they were actually able to get better. My mentor, Dr. Hal Huggins, 
told me 20 years ago, you can't dry off while you're still in the shower. And it's a simple but profound statement. You can't resolve a problem if what causes the problem is continuing to shower in while you're trying to resolve the situation. In today's medicine and dentistry, we have two important things being done to our body, but neither field interacts with the other. If doctors did more of this, we could actually really help a lot more people, get a lot more people better, and do what our profession is supposed to do, which is help to heal people up. One in two of us are dying of heart disease. One in two of us are dying of cancer. We better have a strategy for both. Make sure you take really good care of your oral hygiene and have a program in place to make sure you minimize the amount of pathogenic organisms in our mouths leaking to our bloodstream. There's another great quote, that new knowledge is never immediately adopted. Rather, the old knowledge dies out and the new takes its place. So to each of you who hear this, know that the challenge of whether this truth reaches the world is up to you. Currently, we have roughly 25 million new root canal procedures being done a year in the United States. One of the greatest public health interventions we could possibly do around the world is to make it very clear the important role that dental infections and toxins have, and hopefully someday to make the root canal procedure something of the past because it does nothing positive for the general health of the body at all. I'm just one guy, and this is my truth. That truth has set me free. I feel that freedom every day when I wake up. It's in my joy, my sorrow, my friendships. Oh, and in case you're wondering whether I can get it up, there's no problem there. Uh, <clears throat> I got my life back. So I didn't want my truth to just be a minority of one. I'm a filmmaker and the journey I'd been on was epic. So maybe it was meant to happen to me after all. <laughs>